So, welcome to today's lecture. We will continue our discussion on the concept of sequences. So, if you recall, we had started looking at the notion of a sequence, the convergence of a sequence, and then we said the limit of a sequence is always unique. We gave examples of sequences which are convergent and which are not convergent. A non convergent sequence is also said to be divergent. We continue our study. We also looked at uh, last time the notion of boundedness of a sequence, namely uh, all the terms of a sequence lie between two bounds. Okay. So, uh, here is a theorem uh, about uh, convergence and boundedness. It says that every uh, sequence A n which is convergent, it is also bounded. So, convergent implies it is bounded. So, boundedness is a necessary condition for a sequence to be convergent. Equivalently, one can say not bounded implies not convergent. So, this is a theorem uh, in calculus. Uh, we will not be proving uh, this theorem. Uh, so, uh, we will assume the proof of this theorem. Those who are interested, as I said, can always refer to some book on calculus or look at the web course on calculus uh, developed under NPTEL. So, a sequence is convergent, then it is bounded. So, uh, the use of this kind of a theorem is that if a sequence is not bounded, it cannot be uh, convergent. So, this is, this is how necessary conditions are used. If a necessary condition is not satisfied, then it is not true that uh, uh, it should be uh, convergent. So, however, uh, keep in mind that boundedness alone is not enough to say the sequence is convergent. So, here is a example of a sequence which is bounded, but not convergent. So, this is minus 1 to the power n is a sequence which fluctuates between minus 1 to 1 and it is not convergent. So, let us uh, look at some more theorems about uh, uh, convergence of sequences, uh, which help us to analyze the convergence of a sequence. And these are theorems in uh, calculus, but can be used, uh, we will be using these theorems and you, either you can treat it as a rule uh, for analyzing uh, convergence of a sequence or uh, you can, uh, if you are very keen, uh, all, as usual, you can look at the proofs uh, in the NPTEL web course. So, this says if a sequence A x n and y n are sequences such that x n converges to x and a sequence y n converges to y, then the following results hold. You can given x n and y n, you can construct a new sequence called um, where each nth term of the new sequence is the sum of the nth term of x n and the nth term of y n. So, look at a new sequence whose nth term is x n plus y n, where x n is a sequence which is convergent and y n is a sequence which is convergent. Then uh, it says then the following holds the sequence x n plus y n is also convergent and uh, its uh, result uh, the limit of x n plus y n is x plus y and similarly uh, the you can have the difference of the two sequences. So, you can construct x n minus y n. So, limit of x n minus y n is same as limit of x n minus limit of y n. So, it just you can uh, intuitively keep it as the limit of the sum of sequences is equal to sum of the limits uh, of the corresponding sequences and similarly for the uh, difference of the two sequences. The next result says about the product given a sequence x n and given a sequence y n, the nth terms can be multiplied together to get uh, the sequence uh, x n y n. So, nth term of the sequ new sequence is x n y n. So, if x n is convergent and if y n is convergent, then the sequence x n y n, the product is also convergent and the limit is the product of the two uh, limits. So, it says limit of the product is equal to product of the limits if the either uh, if the both the sequences x n and y n are convergent. And the next is, so we have looked at uh, addition of 
sequences, subtraction of sequences, product. Next, we want to look at the quotient of two sequences. Of course, x n over y n will not be defined if y n is equal to 0 somewhere. So, one has to put a extra condition that if the sequence y n is such that its limit y is not equal to 0, then the result says then for some stage onwards for some n 1 a natural number y n will not be 0. That means, x n over y n is defined for all n bigger than or equal to n 1 from that stage onwards. So, we have a sequence x n over y n which starts with n 1 onwards. So, this sequence is convergent and its limit of x n over y n is equal to x over y. So, limit of the convergent sequences is equal to a limit of the quotient of convergent sequences is the quotient of the limit provided the quotient limit is not equal to 0. So, these are uh, four basic uh, results about the algebra of limits because we are adding sequences, we are multiplying sequences, subtracting and then dividing sequences. So, basically says that the limiting operations preserves the algebra uh, if appropriately defined. So, caution for the quotient we need phi not equal to 0. So, these results can be used to analyze convergence of uh, sequences. So, there is another uh, theorem which again will not be proving, we will be using it. It says the following, suppose you have got three sequences A n, B n and C, C n. So, there are three sequences with the properties that the sequence B n is in between A n and C n for every n. That means, all the terms of the sequence C n, uh, it is not really required that all the terms from some stage onwards if it is true that is also good enough. One can forget a few first few terms of the sequence. So, we want A n less than or equal to B n less than or equal to C n. So, that is one condition and this A n and C n both converge to the same limit say L. Then the result says then the limit B n also exists, the B n is also convergent and is equal to L. So, basically what we are saying is that if the terms of a sequence are sandwiched between two convergent sequences and the convergence of A n and C n in which it between which it is sandwiched is same both A n and B C n converge to L, then B n also will converge to M. This is known as the sandwich theorem which is also quite useful. Again, we will not be proving this result. So, let us look at the example. For example, let us look at the sequence B n which is sin. Sin is the trigonometric function. If you know it very good, if you do not know it, um, I think you have a look at it um, in some uh, school book how the trigonometric functions are defined. So, um, we will not go into the definitions of uh, trigonometric functions only for the sake of examples we will si basically sin of an angle theta is defined and this for every theta sin theta is between minus 1 and 1. So, this is basic property that we will be uh, using. So, B n is a sequence which is defined as sin uh, to the power 5 of n divided by n square. Now, since this sequence B n uh, is it bounded? Is it convergent? So, this is a question to analyze it is boundedness. Let us look at the absolute value of B n. So, that will be equal to absolute value of sin 5 to the power n by n square. Since sin is bounded by minus 1 to 1, mod sin is bounded between by 1. So, we will get that sin 5 n divided by n square, this absolute value of B n is always non negative, absolute value is non negative is less than or equal to 1 over n square which is less than or equal to 1 over n. So, which is less than 1. So, this is a bounded sequence and since it is bounded between 0 and 1 over n and 1 over n converges to 0. So, this B n mod B n is uh, in between uh, 0 and 1 over n. So, by sandwich theorem we get that this also converges to 0. Uh, now, sin uh, this so, there is absolute value of B n which converges to 0 and uh, it is again uh, a easy result which will assume that uh, if mod B n converges to 0 then B n also converges to 0. 
So that will imply that. Um, so we have got looked at some tools which help us to analyze uh, convergence of sequences, namely algebra of limits uh, and uh, the notion of uh, sandwich theorem. Here are some more uh, concepts about sequences which are very useful and important. So we say a sequence a n is monotonically increasing if a n plus 1 is bigger than a n for every n. That means every uh, term a n plus 1 is bigger than the previous term that is a n. So as you as n increases your values of your uh, sequence keep on increasing. Keep in mind we are saying bigger than or equal to, we are not saying strictly bigger, right. So if it, if it is equal, it will be okay for saying the sequence is monotonically increasing. So we want for every n, the next term that is an plus 1 is bigger than or equal to the previous term that is an. So then it is, we say it is a monotonically increasing sequence. Uh, similarly, we will say a sequence is monotonically decreasing if a n plus 1 is less than or equal to a n. That means as n increases, the values of a n decrease, right. a n plus 1 is less than or equal to. Again, we are saying less than or equal to, we are not saying strictly less than. So, uh, the next term is at the most the previous one, it could be smaller. So, that is called a monotonically decreasing. So, monotonically increasing and monotonically decreasing. If uh, you want to say it is strictly bigger, if you want to put, have that condition, then we will say it is strictly monotonically increasing. And similarly, we will say a sequence is strictly monotonically decreasing if a n plus 1 is strictly less than a n or all n bigger than n. So, for example, if we uh, look at the sequence 2 n, it is strictly monotonically increasing because the first term is 2, the second term is 4 next term is 6 and so on. So, as n increases, the values of a n strictly increase. Yes, it is monotonically increasing. Is it bounded above? No, it is not bounded above because for n sufficiently large, you can make 2 n as large as you want. So, it keeps on increasing. It is a sequence which is monotonically increasing and it is not bounded above. Of course, it is bounded below there all the terms are non-negative. So, it is not bounded above. Let us look at the sequence 1 over n. We have already analyzed the sequence. First term is 1, second term is 1 by 2, third is 1 by 3, fourth is 1 by 4 and so on. So, it is a monotonically decreasing sequence which is bounded above by 1 and bounded below by 0. So, this is a monotonically increasing sequence, monotonically decreasing sequence and it is bounded above as well as below. Let us look at the sequence minus 1 to the power n. So, what are the terms of the sequence? We have seen uh, it is a fluctuating sequence. It is neither increasing nor decreasing because the first term is minus 1, second term is 1, third term is minus 1 fourth term is plus 1 and so on. So, it is a bounded sequence, but it is not monotonically increasing nor it is monotonically uh, decreasing. So, it is a sequence which is bounded, but not increasing, not decreasing. Uh, an obvious simple fact is that if a sequence a n is monotonically increasing, then negatives of those terms of the sequence will be monotonically decreasing and conversely. So, a sequence is monotonically decreasing if and only if uh, minus of a n's they will be monotonically increasing and vice versa. You can also say that a sequence is monotonically increasing if and only if minus a n's is monotonically decreasing. So, this is one way of going from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So, here is an important property of real numbers which uh, we said will state at an appropriate stage. So, we can now state the property of real numbers that every monotonically increasing sequence of real numbers, one should specify that every monotonically increasing sequence of real numbers which is bounded above 
will always be convergent. So, this is a prop property of uh, real numbers. Um, you can take it an axiom for real numbers and when one constructs uh, um, real numbers from the rational numbers, this property automatically comes in. So, this is what is called the completeness property of real numbers. It is a very important property and an equivalent way of saying the same property would be in terms of decreasing sequences. Every monotonically decreasing sequence of real numbers which is bounded below is also convergent. This property is not always true for sequences of rational numbers. We can, one can have a sequence of rational numbers which is monotonically increasing and bounded above, but it will not converge to a rational number. So, in the domain of rational numbers this property is not true. This property is true for that was actually one of the reasons why one wanted to enlarge the collection of rational numbers to a bigger class of real numbers. So, real numbers have that property that every monotonically increasing sequence of real numbers which is bounded above is convergent and every equivalently every monotonically decreasing sequence of real numbers which is bounded below is also convergent. Some of the applications of uh, this uh, uh, property are the following. Uh, we will not be going into the proofs of those properties. Uh, let us uh, look at let A n denote the area of 2 n sided regular polygon inscribed in the unit circle. So, you are given, so let us look at this property. You are given a unit circle. Unit circle means what? You are given a circle of uh, radius 1. So, this is a unit circle. Its radius is 1. This is one unit. One would like to find out uh, what is the area of the unit circle. Normally, in your schools, uh, school books, you one assumes the fact that area of the unit circle is a number called pi. Here is a, a precise definition of that using the completeness property. Let us try to estimate the area of the unit circle. To estimate this, what we will do is let us inscribe inside, inscribe inside uh, this uh, unit circle a square. So, this is a square say A, B, C, A, D. So, it is a regular uh, four sided figure inscribed uh, inside the circle. So, if I look at the area of the circle uh, of the square that we can find out because we know this side is 1, this side is 1. So, I can find out the area of these four triangles using the formula half base into height. So, area of the four sided uh, polygon, regular polygon inscribed in the circle is known. Now, let us increase this value. Let us take the midpoints of these arcs and join and join these points. So, we have joined. So, now look at let us call these points as P, Q, R and S. So, if I look at the polygon A, P, B, Q, C, R, D, S, A that is the 8 sided polygon inscribed inside the square uh, inside the circle of radius 1. So, earlier the area of the square, the square filled up a part of the circle. Now, we added these triangles, these 4 triangles. So, the octagon now fills more part of the circle than compared to the circle than compared to the square. And the area of this octagon is quite easy to find because this side is 1. So, half base into height again we can find out this area. So, what we are saying is if we write a n equal to the area of the 2 n sided regular 
polygon inscribed in C, C is the circle, then then this a n is a sequence of numbers and quite clear that a n is monotonically increasing. So, that means a n plus 1 is strictly bigger than a n. So, this is a monotonically increasing sequence of uh, areas and from the figure it is quite clear that if I keep on increasing the number of sides, I will slowly and slowly fill up the uh, unit uh, circle. Okay. And it is also obvious that if I look at the square outside, then the areas of all this uh, two n sided regular polygons inscribed, they are increasing, but they no, never go outside uh, the area of the circumscribed square. So, that means this is monotonically increasing and bounded above. So, implies by the completeness property of real numbers that limit n going to infinity a n will exist and this limit one defines pi to be the number which is this limit. So, this is the rigorous definition of uh, area of the unit circle namely pi as an application of uh, the completeness property of uh, real numbers. So, this is one of the applications of uh, real numbers. So, if you take the regular two n sided regular polygons inscribed in the unit circle, then this is a monotonically increasing sequence which is bounded above and hence will converge. So, the limit is called by denoted by the Greek letter pi that is the area of the unit circle. This is one of the rigorous ways of defining area of the unit circle. Another application of uh, the completeness property, how does one find square root of 2? Of course, you will say what is the point, we can always divide and then do it, right. But can we have a, a algorithm for finding this? Yes, there is a possible, this was given by uh, Isaac Newton, which said that let us define, let us start with the number x 0 equal to 1 and iteratively define x k plus 1 to be equal to 1 by 2 of half of x k plus 2 by x k. So, once x k is defined, x k plus 1 is defined and one shows this uh, sequence of real numbers is convergent uh, using the completeness property and uh, the limit is nothing but uh, limit exists and that is what is called square root 2. So, here is a uh, another way of appreciating the concept of limit of a sequence is that square root 2 uh, if you have seen earlier uh, we also mentioned that square root 2 is a irrational number. So, its value cannot be found exactly like pi the value of square root 2 cannot be found exactly. But since the sequence x k plus 1 or x k is coming closer and closer to this. So, for large x k, x k can be taken as a rational approximation for square root 2 and these are the approximations more often than not used in uh, uh, putting algorithms in the calculators and so on. So, this is a very practical application of convergence of a sequence of real numbers. So, we have looked at uh, sequences of real numbers, we have looked at the limit of uh, a sequence of uh, real numbers and uh, seen various ways of analyzing convergence and uh, the completeness property of real numbers. Here are some important sequences which are useful. For example, if mod of x is less than 1, x is any real number with mod x and 1 then x to the power n. Of course, since mod x is less than 1, this powers will 
in some sense come closer and closer to 0 and one can prove that the limit exists. It is a monotonically uh, decreasing sequence bounded below and it converges and actually it converges to 0. One can prove it rigorously uh, using the tools we have described but will not go into it. But we will use this because it is a useful uh, limit for a number between say a positive number between 0 and 1 if you take its powers they keep on decreasing and decrease to 0. For x greater than 1 here is another one for x non negative if you take the nth root of uh, x that is x to the power 1 over n like square root cube root there is nth root possible for real numbers. If you take this sequence then intuitively 1 denominator n is going to infinity so 1 over n intuitively is going to 0. So, intuitively this limit should go to x to the power 0 that is 1. That is not a proof that is only a way of guessing that this limit exists and is equal to 1 and can be proved uh, rigorously. There are some more uh, um, examples of this for example, um, you have seen ge geometric uh, progression in your school if a n is equal to a plus a r plus a r n 1. So, there is a geometric progression with first term a and common ratio r then we know that the nth term can be expressed as a into 1 plus r to the power n divided by 1 minus r and that is a simple fact that can be deduced. Now, if r is less than 1 say r is between 0 and 1 then I take the limit this is going to go to 0. So, this says that limit of a n is a divided by 1 minus r right for r less than 1. If r is bigger than 1 this is going, going to keep on increasing. So, it is a unbounded sequence. The fact that limit of a n is a over 1 minus r as if r is between 1 0 and 1 that is written as that we I call this as a geometric series a plus a r plus dot 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 a raised to power n minus 1 plus so on. This is called a geometric series the infinite sum kind of sum there on the left hand side and says this infinite sum actually exists and is equal to a over 1 minus r if r is between 0 and 1. So, this is a sum of a geometric series which is once again an application of uh, the fact that r to the power n when r is between 0 and 1 converges to 0. So, that is another way of looking at this. So, uh, we uh, conclude our lecture today for uh, sequences uh, by saying that sequences provide a uh, intuitive tool for analyzing something happening uh, um, at different at regular intervals at ty different time points and uh, helps us to analyze them. Uh, eventually uh, when n becomes large what happens to that. We will see applications of this uh, in the lectures to come. Thank you.